Thanks for taking a few minutes to learn about hydrogen energy systems and the technology that we've developed that will allow small engines to run on hydrogen and also on natural gas. I'm sitting on our prototype six passenger uh, vehicle. This is a stretched golf cart. Originally ran on uh, gasoline. Now it's uh, set up to run on natural gas. We also can run this vehicle on, on hydrogen. CNG is a very important uh, fuel, especially in, in uh, uh, today's environment with all of the harmful emissions coming from gasoline and diesel, natural gas and hydrogen. Hydrogen in particular is the least polluting of all fuels. There's zero emissions. Natural gas has less emissions. We took our technology to the areas that uh, have immediate need and fit the industry standard. Small internal combustion engines are the worst polluting engines uh, that are out there. This technology addresses that, that problem for small engine manufacturers and more importantly for small engine applications. This is one of many hundreds of applications that a small engine can be applied to. As I mentioned, it's a six passenger people shuttle running on natural gas. It meets or exceeds the manufacturer's uh, original specifications for the vehicle uh, in terms of operation, uh, in terms of safety, and in terms of, of uh, reduced emissions, it actually exceeds the manufacturer's original equipment, which was fossil fuel. Hydrogen is important because it's a technology when applied to small engines, you can run it indoors, there's no negative emissions, you don't harm anybody uh, that's in the vicinity of the, uh, of the engine. Natural gas is ideal for this type of an application where you have outdoor movement of people in any way, shape, or form. Whether it's an um, uh, emergency vehicle at athletic fields, uh, golf carts for, for leisure, or for utility uses at factories and manufacturing facilities. This system is designed to be able to integrate into what already is the industry standards. There's no special um, uh, applications that need to be uh, applied to this technology. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you a walk around the vehicle. We're going to introduce to you next uh, Rick Sacconi, the inventor of the technology. I'd like to go over the technology with you and its proprietary technology and uh, we'll kind of go through it and I'll show you uh, how the system works. We wanted to look like there was nothing done so it looks exactly like the same thing as the shuttle started with and that would be actually of building the pod for the storage of the vessels. This vehicle is running on uh, CNG right now. It does run on hydrogen. Uh, it depends on the application that you're going to use it for. It actually starts coming through the tanks, goes through the lines. Uh, bottles are usually serviceable. Either you could exchange or you could transfill. And we'll come back to the back here. Back here is the delivery system. Okay, the system was actually designed to be no different than the way the uh, golf cart or shuttle operates. So that was the whole thing. So it actually operates exactly like the shuttle or golf cart actually runs. Whenever you step on the gas, it starts the motor and goes. And in that, all the, the control panel actually shuts the solenoids off and on. And there's a vacuum switch that shuts the main solenoid off and on. So from the vacuum switch, which turns the solenoid on, which delivers the fuel into the mixing block. So this is actually the delivery of the hydrogen or the CNG fuel. The next component I want to discuss briefly is the, uh, the fuel um, pricing and consumption uh, on, the, on the vehicle. The fuel costs on operating this vehicle are significantly less than uh, fossil fuel. If you're running this vehicle on a natural gas uh, fuel, the gallon of gas equivalent for that is in the 60 cents uh, a gallon of gas equivalent range. If it's hydrogen, it's $1.80 a gallon of gas equivalent range. The, the um, unit runs uh, in excess of the manufacturer's uh, original uh, specifications. There is no noticeable uh, uh, lack of power, lack of torque, lack of uh, operating performance with the vehicle. Every single engine that we've tested, we've done data on, on those engines. We have a, uh, a mission sensor that senses all the five uh, 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 critical uh, greenhouse gases. And then we put the uh, small engines up on, a, on the uh, dynamometer and we run the, run the tests. We've been able to prove on the, on the engine stand that we're, we're meeting the, the uh, application needs that we need to meet. And now we've put them into different prototypes so that we can 
um, really put the uh, units uh, through the tests and show that it'll meet um, uh, manufacturer's application uh, requirements. The technology, as we mentioned, runs on both hydrogen and natural gas. Um, hydrogen cylinder, same as the natural gas cylinder. For refueling the vehicle, um, you have two options. You can, you can do a vehicle exchange. Rick's going to show you uh, how the system is designed so that the bottles are safe. They cannot come out of this pod. They're, they're enclosed in a cage. They're, they're strapped with, with straps. And then the bottles simply slide out so that you could exchange them for uh, full bottles if these bottles were, were empty. Remove the manifold, that's it. And then you re reattach the manifold and then you slide them, slide them back in. Or we could do anywhere on the vehicle, we could locate a, a industry standard uh, natural gas connection, connection, just like you see on any of the current uh, CNG technology that's out there. And then you could have a fill, fill port off of your natural gas line at your uh, location, or you can have it uh, simply through a bottle exchange program. Then again, as we go through the engine, as Rick, Rick had showed you, there are multiple safety uh, points in the system because one of the critical points we wanted to make sure we did not do is have a preloading of the fuel when you, when you fire the engine. So the vehicle does not preload the fuel and it keeps the, it keeps the fuel where it needs to be for, for safety. Um, if the vehicle were to um, uh, be in any kind of, a, of an accident or roll, again, if you look at, the, if you look at where the uh, uh, fuel is stored, it's not under the vehicle or on top of the vehicle, it's stored in a safe center uh, location on the, on the vehicle. One final redundant safety feature that we, we are uh, very excited about is the driver's side seat has a pressure safety switch. If no one is sitting in that seat, the vehicle cannot start. If, the, if there's an incident where the driver is ejected from the seat, the switch shuts everything down on the vehicle. All fuel, everything is shut down on the vehicle. We're going to show you outside, but I want to draw your attention to the fact that they tell you not to use, not to go over a 25 degree grade or go down uh, anything uh, greater than a 14 degree uh, grade. This vehicle has the power and the means to be able to, to do that. Today, we're in Akron, Ohio. It's 32 degrees outside. We've run the vehicle in uh, a low 20 degree uh, temperature. Has no effect on the engine uh, whatsoever. Engine starts up, runs fine. The torque on the unit is incredible. Let's do this. Let <laughs> Again, we want to thank you for taking time to learn of our technology and the application that we showed you. For more information, you can contact us at heshydrogen.com and we'll be glad to entertain any requests for visits or additional information.